Hi, Scrubs, I hope you're well. Hello, Starfam. Hey, how's it going, Scouts? And welcome to another episode of the Solar Podcast. Uh, and this episode, it will be our first episode without Rose, and uh, it will feel a bit strange um, to adjust to her kind of being here. But of course, we're so happy for her uh, and her job at Star Stable. But for today, our topic is Star Stable Entertainment's new game that are currently in development. And that game is called Wild Heart Magical Animal Friends. And our guest today is someone who has tried the game, and that is just another pixel. Welcome! Welcome! Thank you! Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm just another pixel. Uh, people call me pixel, people call me Cass. It's either or for me. And how long have you played SSO? I started playing probably around nine years ago this year, which is crazy. Yeah, wow. <laughs> that was a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, do you have any social media where our listeners can find you? Yeah, so my YouTube and Instagram are both just another pixel, all one word, pretty easy to find. <laughs> and yes, another two months have passed and a lot of things have happened. So what about you, Quick? What have happened for you in May and June? Well, to be honest, in May and June I've been very busy with the lovely work, so I haven't been up to much. Um, However, I guess June has been a little bit more busy and uh, Glade Gamers, which is my club that I own on the UK servers, uh, just went through a huge change and they're finally Ooh. up and ready here in July. Yeah, so that's exciting, but it's been a long mm -hmm. project that thankfully my management team has been very helpful in uh, helping me do. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the most exciting thing that's happened over the past few months because I've just been really busy with work. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about you, Yesterday Pixel? Yeah, so I've honestly just been pretty busy with school in my real life that Star Stable hasn't really been a thing besides the videos that I film. So at the start of the year, I had a goal of like training every day, trying to train as many horses as possible. But I'm currently in my final year of school, so grade 12 in oh. Australia. And uh, it's been... Probably as crazy as I expected it, so yeah. not too much like extra star stable on the free time, but mm. I think I'm still coping well, but yeah. A lot of yeah. pressure to deal with, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good luck. Thank School you. School is very hard. Yeah. <laughs> and how about you, TZ? Well, I don't think I've played a huge amount of star stable, though I suppose I've done a decent amount. Still haven't trained any horses. Um, that hasn't changed. Story of my life. Recently. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yours is worse yeah. than mine. Um, I've uh. like six to train, and as you told me, you have like over a hundred. <clears throat> so, you know, oh, I'm doing yeah. all right. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> um, for what I've been up to in general, um, I'm still on the hunt for jobs at the minute. Um, yeah. I have been working on the garden. My tomato plants are so far doing actually really well um so hey. hopefully we'll have some tomatoes at some point soon and uh I'm trying to think what else have i been doing i can't really remember i think it was the garden mm -hmm. and the job hunt yeah so that's pretty yeah. what i've been up, been up to yeah um uh, myself i haven't been up to much either um especially not in star stable since i tend to not really play anything when it's when the heat waves comes, <laughs> it's just mm. too hot during summer to yeah. do anything with the computer. Um, that was pretty horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the heat wave did uh, help my little plants on my balcony. I did plant some uh, squash, some salad, and some green beans. And Ooh, they nice. just are growing. <laughs> yeah, they're growing like little monsters, and I really <laughs> like them. They're really cute. <laughs> nice. Uh, other than that, I actually got a new haircut, which Ooh. I've been waiting like one or two years now <laughs> during lockdown yeah. to get. Oh. <laughs> um, so I actually shaved off half my hair. <laughs> oh, I'm so jealous. Yeah, um, it's great. I've been wanting that haircut. I've been thinking about it for many, many yeah. years and I finally like, well, why am I thinking? I should just do it. Yeah, um, I love yeah. it. It's also perfect for the, the heat. It's, it's, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. <laughs> um, and I can't wait to just keep saving out uh, the part that has hair, make it really long to have braids in. Oh, yeah. yeah, 
It's kind of cool. So yeah, on to today's topic, which is the game Wild Heart. And for me, Tease and Quick, we haven't had the uh, opportunity to try it out yet. So our expert here is Cass. So <laughs> we're gonna start <laughs> with interviewing Cass. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the first question, what is Wild Heart Medical Animal Friends game? And where did you find out about it? So Wild Heart is a mobile game currently in development. I know that it's in beta uh, or late early access right now in Australia, but TC said just earlier that I think it's in the UK as well. So mm. it's in a few places, but uh, it's on Android. I'm actually not too sure if it's on Apple yet, so I'm actually not that much of an expert. I only know what I found <laughs> out through playing and I don't have it on my Apple phone, but I might just not have yeah. the beta for it on there. Like well, I can certainly provide some links down because I'll, I'll be having a look to see where it's yeah. available because I am probably going to actually play it after we finish recording this because I know I have <laughs> access to this, I've just found out, so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, developed by Star Stable Entertainment. A question that I've got a lot is they don't like the fact that Star Stable has a new game because they feel it's taken away from Star Stable, but mm. I like to refer to Star Stable Entertainment like a company, if you guys know EA, Electronic Arts, they've got a bunch of different gaming franchises, so Star mm. Wild Heart is developed by a completely different team. Don't worry, it's not yeah. taken away from Star Stable or anything like yeah. that. Completely different teams, but yeah, it's just a super cute, fun little game to play on your phone. <laughs> And uh, I found out about it originally, I think, on a YouTube video where someone was talking about a Facebook group who had found it on their app store. And I didn't think about it too much until I found it on my app store. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just stumbled onto it when I was looking at the Star Stable Entertainment page on Google Play. And it was really weird oh. because if I typed in Wild Heart into the search bar, it didn't come up. Now it does come up, so... Maybe it's changed, so maybe more people are in early access programs now, but yeah, I just kind of stumbled into it, and I was oh. like, hey, this is a fun game, Star Stable-ish related, so I thought it would be fun to check out on my channel. So how did you come a beta test? I know you sort of answered it at the minute. Yeah. Um, was it a case of it was open to everybody that was in Australia, or was it more specific than that? And what is the game itself actually about? Yeah, so... Um, I'll start with what the game's about, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's where you are helping like this little world uh, kind of overcome this badness. I, I actually haven't made it too far into the game yet because mm -hmm. I kind of do it in Let's Play parts and doing yeah. one part a week means I don't play it a lot. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you could like binge the game in one entire week and have it finished yet. I have not done that, but from what I can tell, there's this mysterious person and they're causing a lot of danger in the world. You know, there's mysterious earthquakes, the horses are in danger, you know, they're trying to be kidnapped and kidnapped, is that the right word for horses? I'm not <laughs> sure, but yeah. So you start the game and your character is this horse whisperer, Star Stable, the Wild Heart game calls it something different, but it's basically mm -hmm. a horse whisperer. So you're like the chosen one to try and help these horses from what is threatening them. And yeah. onto the how I became a beta tester, it was kind of random. I'm pretty sure for games on Google Play, uh, the team might just put it up, like the developers put it onto the Google Play and maybe they randomly select different accounts because I know people in the dis like in the comment section of my first video they were like I'm from Australia but it's not there so I think it was very mm -hmm. randomized luck of the draw thing so that's yeah all I know about it really okay going off the the beta tester topic what is a beta tester just briefly just so the viewers obviously can understand what that means yeah, so when a game is in development, uh, they obviously have a few little problems when they're first trying to release it out to the world, and a beta tester is just someone who will try and pick up these problems. Personally, I haven't run into any right now, but if I did, you just quickly contact the team and be like, hey, I don't think this works correctly, and they can work on fixing it before it is released to the worldwide, and so they can have the best game possible for an entire audience. Hmm. And how do you play and level up in the game? 
Yeah, so there's this system called the Harmony Levels, and you basically do quests like、uh, normal games, and there's little quests like help this person clear the road and go to the village and buy a shopping list. You even get your own little house, which I think is really cute. It kind of gives me、Aww. Animal Crossing vibes, but not really. I just I like、Aww. the fact that I can decorate my house.、Uh, Uh, as of now, I haven't run into too many customizable things, but it's still fun to have that little aspect in the game. And then your harmony level is like your character level, I suppose. So you get harmony increased by befriending wild horses. You basically chuck them a bit of food, and you walk up to them, and they become your friend. And you can choose to put them into your stable. Unfortunately, there is a limited amount of stable spaces that you can have. So personally, I've decided that I just want to have one of every color, which also just means I've got some wild horses that still kind of roam the area, even though I friended them, and they're just not scared of me anymore. But you gain levels by that, and it unlocks more quests. So for the horses that you have friended but you haven't actually tamed. Is it obvious to tell that you've already tamed them, so you're not running back into them again? Yeah, they have a little red heart above them, and unfortunately, they don't actually stay spawned in the area. I think、mm-hmm. around every maybe hour. I haven't quite figured out the increments, but the game resets everything, so you can collect more food to feed the horses you're training, and you also、oh. get more horses that you can train in the area. Yeah, but you know that. Uh, you friended them because they don't run away from you anymore, and they do have a little heart above their head. Okay, noted.、Um, is it free to play, and is there any in-app purchases? Right now, it is free to play, and I'm pretty sure that's how it is going to be because there is in-app purchases, which just involve、uh, buying the currency of the game, which is gems and coins, and with each purchase, you also get. You can collect herbs, which I think are used for crafting and also trading in the future. So you also get full stack of that as well. So maxed inventory、okay. space of the herbs and whatever currency you choose to buy. So the the shilling is is the shilling limit back again? <laughs> Actually, no. I don't think the actual money has a limit. Just the collectibles, okay, I guess.、Okay. It just、yeah. says a stack in the app purchases. I can、mm-hmm. read it out. Hang on. So you can buy gems, coins, and oh, it's changed from this morning. So now you can buy a bright blue seashell. So I guess they're just maybe rarer collectibles from the game that you can buy、mm-hmm. and things like that. So there's herbs and collectibles, but with gems and coins, you can buy accessories for your horses. You can buy clothes, and、uh, you can also buy little pets which run beside you. So. I've got a duck. I've got a. I'm trying to look for it. There it is. I've got a goose right now. There's a chicken. There's also cats and、uh, little baby chickens as well. It's rather cute. And when I was looking at your let's play, I was like, I want the chicken. The chicken's so adorable. Yeah. <laughs> of course you want the chicken. <laughs> I know. It's like Alicia online all over again. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so obviously, I know that you said that you've been doing some, like small increments so far to do like one episode each week. But what are your thoughts so far with how much you've played? Ah,、uh, I, I definitely I am enjoying it. I, it's a very cute little game. The thing that I don't I find it a little hard to play is it is an online only game. I haven't tested how much data it uses. But for some things like to unlock quests, you have to do a bunch of horse friending, and、um, it's a little easier for me to do that when I'm waiting for a bus or something like that, rather than sitting in my room. So、uh, it's it's been a little bit slow to level up that way, but otherwise I'm like rather happy. I think、uh, it's one of those games which.、Um, There's a limited amount of stuff that you can do. You're very much following a quest line, so、mm-hmm. it's a game that I can't see myself playing for like a month straight and never feeling like doing something else. That doesn't mean it's a bad game. I think a lot of people can get stuck in the, oh, I'm a Star Stable player. I can only play Star Stable. Where I think it's so awesome to have so many different games which offer me different things. So this is a small, cute 
horse related game on my mobile and then I can play Star Stable on my computer, I can play other horse games which give me other things that other games don't give me. So I'm very happy with what I've played of the game so far. So sort of like one of those games that you would be playing while you're in front of the TV? You yeah, sort of half definitely. pay attention? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For, for some aspects, yes. Definitely training horses mm-hmm. and things like that, but focusing on the quest line, I'd probably say, for maybe if you want to play the game twice, then the second time you can, it's a TV game, but otherwise mm-hmm. I'm very one for reading the quest line and learning about the story. What do you wish um, to be added to the game before its final release? I kind of mentioned it in the previous question, but maybe yeah. some more offline features, even if I can just train up like collect horses things like that so i can level up my harmony level Mm. but probably also more customization i haven't unlocked too many different areas but so far the customization feels very limited in terms of appearance hair colors and even clothes things like that Mm. if they were to add more customization what would be your preference for them to focus on? I'm definitely struggling with the clothes part, but I think that's Mm -hmm. also because the hair that I chose is very, like, it's just long hair and it's black. I'm very basic like that, but definitely for clothes, I'm lacking colour and variety, Mm -hmm. so it's hard for me to make outfits, but once again, I'm actually not too sure what future levels uh, unlock in aspect of clothes so i'm not too quick to judge on that i might just be mm-hmm. missing something right now so yes or i don't know what they've got planned for future updates either they might be sitting here working on clothes and i'm here like oh you should add more clothes like i don't want to be that person <laughs> i know how hard it must be for them to sit there and be like we're working on it so yeah yeah no understandable so what aspects of wild heart did you prefer or dislike compared to star stable or do you feel that they are far too different to compare in any aspect at all? I wouldn't say that they're far too different, but I do think that they are two different games. Star Stable is very much focused on the multiplayer aspect of it, whereas Wild Heart, Mm -hmm. uh, it does have a multiplayer. I haven't played it because I don't have anyone that I know who can play the game right now, but um, it feels very more like you can play it as a solo player game. It also feels a lot more childlike i guess the quest lines are simpler i know that Mm -hmm. most of the words i know how to say whereas sometimes in star stable i'm like gosh i i don't even know what that word means and like eight-year-olds are playing (laughs) this game so yeah i do think they're pretty different games i don't see too many similarities even in graphics wise Uh, some people in the comment section of my first one were like oh the dark source sounds like garnic but I'm not sure if that's just because it was associated with the Star Stable team or something. Like, I Mm -hmm. can see that, but yeah, in my mind, I just can't really connect the two and make judgments between the two games, because in my mind, they are different. So going off that, uh, I know that you said that you don't currently have anyone that you can play with at the moment, Um, but can you play together with friends, theoretically, if you had somebody around you that was playing it too? Yes, because I haven't tried it out, I'm not too sure how it works, but uh, I did have a little look at it and tried to do a little bit of research. It's really hard to research this game. If I'm stuck in a level, I can't just (laughs) Google it. No one knows anything about this game, but um, yeah, from what I can tell, you can join with friends. I've got a one out of two, but that might be just because you need at least two people to play with friends. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if there's a limit, but you get this personalized code and you basically send that to your friend. You cannot do that in the app. You have to do it externally, but yeah, you just give them a code, they put it in, and then I believe you're in the same world. From what it sounded like to me, you can maybe do quests together, or at least collect horses together or something, I'm not sure, but yeah, you're in the same world on your same little cute little horses. So it's like uh, your own personal server in a way? Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think that fans of Starship Ride will enjoy this game, Wildheart? Um... I had to think about this one quite a bit because Mm. I think some of them will, but 
from what other people have already told me, they're like, this looks very much like a aim towards younger people than myself. And uh, I probably would agree. I feel like I'm a little bit old to be playing it, but at the same time, I'm still having fun and people shouldn't judge me for playing it because I'm having fun. But I think that it is different to Star Stable. You can't do dressage or anything like that. So I think they might be interested in it, but a lot of people like to be like, oh, Star Stable is better than this. So they're definitely not going to find a Star Stable in Wild Heart. But in my opinion, it is a pretty fun game for people who have a device, a mobile or an iPad or whatever, and they can check it out. But probably more towards the younger audience, I'm still closer to saying would enjoy it a little bit more. Okay. okay. And that uh, was the final question for our interview part. Um, and now we have two questions for everyone to answer. Um, do you think you will play Wild Heart Magical Animal Friends? Wow, it's a long title. <laughs> do you think you will play it when it's released? Uh, quick. I think I'll. I th I think I'll check it out. Whether I'll play it long term and try to get through everything, I'm not sure. Um, especially obviously, as Cass said, it's it's a little bit more directed to a younger side and obviously i'm in my 20s so it just depends on whether you know it catches my attention enough to to keep me going but i definitely want to give it a go like check it out give it a chance and then if i end up enjoying it like Cass does then i'll probably continue with it and then if not then at least i've tried it um but yeah i'll, I'll definitely give it a go i'll give it a chance um yeah. and then we'll see how it goes yeah um, I agree. I think I, I really think it looks adorable. Um, I really like the, the simple and just sweet and soft looking style. Mm -hmm. um, and I do enjoy to have like a simple little mobile game um, just to play and distract me while like I'm commuting or something like that. So um, the that the gameplay gameplay is a bit simple, doesn't really mind me, personally. So I think I will really try it out and like it. How about you, Cass? Do you think you will keep playing it? Depending on how much it changes, so far from what I've been playing, I think it's a one-time thing for me. Once I finish up mm -hmm. playing it for the YouTube channel, I don't see myself going back and playing it again. But yeah, I definitely think it's worth maybe trying it out if you are looking for a little mobile game. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> and how about you, DC? Well, I'm literally going to play it pretty much as soon as we finish here, <laughs> is my plan. Uh, <laughs> All right, to, yeah. to check it out, uh, because I saw that I can now access it. So I know that like when people hear this podcast, they'll be hearing my opinions before I've actually played it, and they'll be saying the Wild Hearts play before that so that's gonna be a little bit confusing but um mm, yeah, yeah. I, i'm definitely gonna play it through because um one I, I kind of like trying out new games to see what they're like um play wise and also the fact that it is one of star souls games and you know um making videos on that i'll probably enjoy doing that because there's been the only problem that i have is i tend to have too many mobile games that i play on the channel and sometimes when you have too oh. many mobile games to play on the <laughs> channel it starts to get a bit it's too much to do um so yeah it's going to depend how kind of high impact it is and how um many resources and things like that it's going to take to do it because some mobile games you can play really casually and really chill and some you have to grind like blazes to get through so it's going to yeah. depend a lot on that whether i'll play it long term so i will try it out play it through a few times i think probably on youtube um there's only like i'd say one or two other mobile games that i could say that i played a few episodes of and then i just couldn't play any more of like rival stars yeah. on mobile version oh yeah. Yeah. oh yeah um I, I got i think <laughs> 10 or 11 episodes through that and then i just had enough i couldn't stand it yeah. anymore but i loved it on desktop so yeah yeah um, true, true i i don't want to see that happen that would probably be my only concern because Rival Stars was so time um, like the way the mechanics worked in the Rival Stars version 
on the mobile was everything was slowed down, everything was time based, you know, come back in 30 minutes, come back in an hour, come back in two days. And Uh, I detested that. So I'm hoping that Wild Heart doesn't have that level of time based stuff. Where I would say something like Horse Haven gets it right is, you know, you can put crops in that'll take a minute, you can put in some crops in that'll take 45 minutes, or some upgrades that'll take a couple of hours. So there's like different time frames there so for me that's gonna be a big part of it like um with wild hearts if there's any of that time based stuff and how long it is so that's unknown right now i guess yeah yeah it's still in development so nobody knows mm-hmm. what will happen yeah and maybe because it is a game that looks like it is geared more towards younger children mm-hmm. maybe if they would implement timing aspect maybe that would be to maybe like prevent children to you know, game for too long a period of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what because I was I, gonna yeah. say, yeah. Yeah, because I've sensed that in some other games. Yeah, kind of like the stay overnight thing in Star Stable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Because otherwise the parents are like, oh my god, they're just playing the game, they're not doing their homework. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. And then to our other question, what... What do we think of the style of Wild Heart? Do you like it or wish it was closer to the style of Starship Line? Uh, I can start. Um, I think the style of Wild Heart is really, really charming. The feel is very, you know, cute and uh, inviting. Very like soft-looking shapes and bright colors. Um, but for the comparison to Starship, I'm not really sure how much comparison there is. Um, because it, it is like quite a big difference uh, in the vibe and the style. Maybe some similarities with what I've seen in gameplay videos with, you know, some rune stones and the wild whisper and maybe some, yeah, you know, some assets and story. But um, I, I think they feel like two different games. <laughs> yeah, what, what do you think, Cass? Yeah, I really like the art style. Um, I think it works well with the game that it is, and I don't think they should make it more like Star Stable just because they're Star Stable Aww. Entertainment. I think that also means people are, feel like they're open to criticizing the game against Star Stable, which I've already mentioned. I don't think they can really be compared that much. Sure, compare them, because, like, I mean, I'm a Star Stable YouTuber and. Aww. Star Stable is my base. Star Stable is what I know. But yeah, I don't think they should change the graphics because I think it works really well and it, it does really give me like Animal Crossing vibes, I guess. And I really yeah. like Animal Aww. Crossing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not even sure if you could compare them. That's just the vibe that I kind of get and I really like that. So I think it, it comes down to personal opinion as always with these types of things. And mm. uh, what about you, Quick? I mean, from looking at it, I think it is very, very cute. Uh, like, as like a lot of you guys have said, I think it is very cute. But um, I think we also need to obviously remember that it is going to be more of a simple, you know, less graphical. Because my fear at the moment is people are going to look at it and they're going to be like, oh my goodness, the graphics are, you know, awful in comparison to Star Stable. How are they hmm. from the same company? Um, and well, that's maybe saying awful is a little bit mean. Um, but yeah. they're a little more simple. <laughs> they're in, simpler in comparison. But I think just obviously to remind everyone who is obviously going to be looking at this game that it is a mobile game and there's only so much a mobile can run. Yeah. Um, which is why mobile games do tend to have, you know, a little bit simpler gameplay, simpler functions, simpler looks. Um, because mobiles can't run the same amount of things as a PC can run. Uh, but overall, I do think it's really, really cute. Like, I think uh, uh, one of you said, it's it's very charming. And, and it's definitely its own little franchise. Yes, okay, it's been developed by the same company, or it's under the, it's the same name, but it's a completely different team, and you can really see that in the style and in how everything else is presented. And I think it's really cute. Um, I yeah. definitely see the Animal Crossing kind of aspect, the more circular and exaggerated body styles and mm. you know everything's a lot more colorful um but yeah no i do like it it's definitely different um but in a good way and also again it's a, it's a mobile game everything kind of has to be a little bit bigger on a mobile or if it's a mobile game 
because obviously you've got to bear in mind that it's aimed towards smaller screens so you have to exaggerate things a little bit better because you're going to be seeing it on a smaller scale so if you've got a bunch of details but they're really really tiny you're not going to see it on your mobile mm. in comparison to on your computer screen so yeah i like that everything is a lot bigger is a lot more exaggerated because you can actually see it regardless of what kind of program or you know device you're using it on yeah um, but yeah, I like it. It's cute. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think it's it's an intentional style, so therefore it's done well for its intentions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts of the style, Casey? I mean, for me personally, I don't tend to like overly cutesy things, except like certain things, like certain things I'll be like, yeah. I mean, I love the little like purple alicorn. What's the purple alicorn's name? Plumeria or something, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's so adorable. I don't know why. In particular, I'm yeah. just like, that is so cute. The um, glasses. Yeah, it's, just, it's really it's really cute. So I like that. Um, as for like the horses and stuff, I prefer more realistic style, personally. That's just me. But um, I do think there are aspects of it look really, really cute. And uh, do I wish it was more closer to Star Stable? I think I want to say no, just purely because Star Stable eventually is going to be on mobile, and I can already play Star Stable mm, on true, desktop anyway, true. so I'm not bothered from that perspective, I guess. Um, yeah. I'm fine with it being a completely different thing, and like, when Star Stable does eventually come to mobile, I know that I'll play it to try it out and see what it's like. And I might use it very infrequently, but on last Star Stable Mobile, whenever it goes to actual mobile devices, like worldwide, has any extra features to the regular game. I know rightly it'll be something I'll do once or twice in a blue moon, and other than that, probably won't go near. Um, so I think it's good that Wild Heart has differentiated itself so much in its art style. Yeah. Because I think otherwise um, it could be compared too much. You know, oh, it's sort of, it's nearly yeah. as realistic as Star Stable Horses. Or it's not, you know, whereas it's so different, you really can't compare the two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, it's clearly a mobile game. Yeah. 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 That was our question segment. We can move on to our next segment, which is our favorite and least favorite updates of the two months that have passed. The, and those months are May and you. Let's start with May. Which favorite and least favorite on May? I can start. And my least favorite for the month of May, I picked uh, the Horses of Jovic Race because I think I did it maybe like once or twice. And um, used to try it. And then never went back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because uh, as I mentioned earlier, I don't really play much now when it's so, mm -hmm. so hot outside. And and inside as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's everywhere. Yeah. Um, and also training horses is not my favorite thing to do yeah. in Star <laughs> So yeah, that wasn't really my, my thing. But I do like that there were free beats to breeds to choose from the Arabia, Mawari and Akalteke. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but I felt like yeah. previously it was like one or two yeah. choices between breeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah when, it, okay. when, it, when it first joined, I think it was one individual breed, and I think the next time it came back, it was mm. maybe two. Yeah, this is, I think yeah. they're the just first slowly adding. Three. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then for my favorite of May, um, it was uh, I usually like uh, I had my birthday in May, <laughs> yay, so I usually put yay, <laughs> so I usually pretend like the the week of my birthday, like the. Wednesday update of that, it's like Stasha was birthday present for me. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yay! So this year it was the main story quest with Fripp. Oh, that was, that's a yeah, good one a good to one. have on your birthday yeah. week. Yeah, that was a really good good one. But it feels like uh, the main story quest is like always an obvious choice of, mm -hmm. um, for the favorite. So I did pick the Generation 3 Arabians for Ooh. my favorite of May. Nice. Uh, because they are just stunning. I mean, mm -hmm. oh. So beautiful, yeah. Uh, and the show haltish they came with were super cool. So yeah, they were just such an awaited, updated breed. Uh, I think they really did an amazing job with them. The gates and everything. Ah, oh, they're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what were your favorite and least favorite updates of May? Uh, quick. Uh, I think going off 
like I said before at the start of the episode, I haven't really had too many chances to play the game a lot the past few months. Um, but I think very similar to you, I'm not a very big training person, <coughs> as you already know. <laughs> um, the amount of untrained horses in my stable is embarrassing. Um, so I don't think I touched the Horses of Jorvik race at all. I saw it and it was a very interesting and it looked like a fun race. Um, however, I personally didn't even try it because races and such, for the most part, don't tend to interest me. Like I said, I don't really train. I don't tend to race. Ironically enough, even though I do tend to race TC into these pools, <laughs> um, I'm not a very competitive person when it comes to racing in Star Stable. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I tend to try and race everybody into these calls and try to get here first, but ironically enough in Star Stable, I don't enjoy the racing aspect that much. Um, so I will agree with T, uh, TC? With CC! Um, that the Horses of Jorvik race probably just... It's not the fact that I disliked it, it's just it, it didn't excite me as much. Um, and then obviously May, we had the Arabians, we had the main story quest with Fripp's mm. amazing new look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so cute. Um, and then we had Farah's workshop as well with the recyclables. Um, I, and again, with the cold tolerance removed from the game from all, all right. the horses. That, I, I found that as an interesting update um, because obviously a lot of the horses that had the cold tolerance for the most part had a little bit of a higher price range because obviously they had the extra perk of being able to go into Dino Valley. Mm -hmm. But then again, saying that, I'm kind of happy that I don't have to change horses every time I want to go to Dino Valley. <laughs> yeah. Not that I usually do. The only thing that's up at Dino Valley for me at the moment is races and again, <laughs> no, I don't have those. <laughs> yeah. um, so... But it does excite me that, you know, for whenever they decide to give Dino Valley its well-needed makeover, that we can oh, explore yes, it yes. on whichever horse we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I found that very interesting. I think I'm going to go with the uh, Arabians, though. Hmm. Um, and also the idea of the, the... Just purely because... You got more horse names, which we again definitely right. needed. Obviously, the yes. yeah, the Arabians were very, very beautiful. I, mm. Again, loved it. Um, I'm mm. not usually a small, skinny kind of person <laughs> when it comes to horses. I like my big, chunky. The Finn horses were perfect for me, mm -hmm. but I did end up liking the Arabians a lot more than I thought. They are very elegant. They are very pretty. They are very well modeled, um, and I think they're a fair price for what you're getting as well. But also, we again got more names and also got the magic horse hotkey so that it's way easier to change the color of your horses or your magic horses. Mm -hmm. I like the idea that we can just change them wherever and, you know, I think I discussed this in a, a past podcast ages ago. Oh, I think it was one of my first where yeah. I was discussing the fact that, yes, magic horses are great. But there was hardly anywhere in the game mm -hmm. that you could actually use their coat colors yeah. because there were hardly any right. wild spots that you actively just go in. So I was excited that they added, obviously, the whole idea of just being able to freely change your horse being magical and not magical. Um, and it really excited me that they added a hotkey for it as well because I find hotkeys very, very handy in terms of that or going into a menu and blocking half of your screen with your characters mm, like true. you know ui um so yeah that was probably my favorite update for may just because not only did we get some really cute horses mm. uh but we got some functionality and we also got stuff that we desperately needed like new horse names because <laughs> i find it very difficult to name horses um yeah. and i'm very <laughs> excited that we can give them like one worded names as well yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that was really really cool it was, it's very helpful. But that was my favorite stuff for May. What about you, Cass? What was your least and favorite of May? Okay, so my least favorite is kind of between the Horses of Jorvik and Farah's Workshop. I am a trainer, I do like training, I like to multitask, I always watch YouTube whilst I train. Uh, it really helps me focus, but the reason it's one of my least favorite was just because I was busy so I didn't actually get to really do it so 
I really actually liked the show jumping race. I thought it was laid out really well. For a lot of the show jumping I feel like Star Stable comes out with, especially the limited ones, I feel like it's absolutely impossible for me to turn my horse in that sharp of a direction that they make you turn. But I thought that the Horses of Jorvik one was... The flow was really nice, but I actually think I'm gonna say my least favorite was Ferris Workshop. Not because I don't like Ferris Workshop, I do like the grind that it gives you like a year later. I still haven't got the owl yet. I just, I haven't done it yet, but I like the fact that there's still that thing that I need to do in Star Stable. But I didn't really like how I now need plants and recyclables for Ferris Workshop. That was something that I was like, I understand where they're coming from, but now I need to make sure I've got both of the things. So I just like am always stocking up. I think my main problem was once I finished with the horse thing with um, Big Bonnie, I stopped collecting yeah. the recycling because I didn't really see a point to it. I collected all the outfit things, even though I could have trained my horse with it. But yeah, I just wasn't going out of my way to collect the recycling. So when this update came, I was like, I didn't have like a backup of recycling. So oh. I needed plants and recycling. Um, I also, I didn't like the cold tolerance thing. Um, the more I think about it, I feel like a lot of the horse prices, I used to be like, oh yeah, this horse is slightly more expensive because it is cold tolerant, whereas now yeah. there's not that in the game. I kind of look at some horse breeds and I'm like, you're more expensive than another horse breed, but now you don't have that cold tolerance special thing to you. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the, um, oh, what are they, the, the North Swedish horses, I uh, like you would look at their price and I'd be like, well, you are cold tolerant, so it makes sense. So your price is higher because you have that extra aspect. Whereas these horses are more expensive because they have special moves and, you know, new animations. Yeah. Whereas now, to an extent, you can't really justify that because, you know, yeah. you might have the North Swedish horse be more expensive than another horse that has an extra animation or is a brand new model or brand new animations. And you're kind of like, well, you don't have that extra edge to explain your price anymore. So I, I get that yeah. completely as well. Yeah, yeah. My other thing with it was just the fact that I... Not having a cold tolerant horse didn't remove your capability of going to Dino Valley. It just slightly mm. inconvenienced it. So I kind of liked the fact that you kind of got a reward, I guess, for having a cold tolerant horse. Even though, you know, I was yeah. always the one. It's not that I went to Dino Valley with a cold tol tolerant horse. I was still always the one going around at a slow gallop. But to me, it just kind of felt like that little bit of realism as well was kind of gone mm -hmm. but um my favorite was torn between the other two so i i really liked wow. Fripp's storyline i was really happy to get more main story the only problem i have is i feel like i forget all the little details which has happened with the main story because it's been so long yeah. since i've played it yeah which really makes me just want to like binge through all of the main stories on an alternate account just so i can remember what's going on again and all the little details but in terms of uh for me I like doing story quests, but a large part of my enjoyment for Star Stable is making YouTube videos as well, and I find it a little bit harder to enjoy making Let's Play videos. Um, I like doing them, editing them, especially since if I film them and edit them straight after each other, I find myself being like, oh my gosh, I've just read through this text and now I have to listen to myself talk about it again. And I know that Let's Plays just don't do as well on my channel personally because a lot of people could do that quest so there's just less enjoyment out of the storyline even if I enjoyed filming it and you know just getting another storyline so I think I'm gonna say Arabians was my favorite because I'm also not one for the Arabians but I found myself really liking the Arabians I also thought the show holders mm. were amazing I really liked them as well mm. And the more horse naming was really good. I have nicknames for most of my horses, so it's it's nice yeah. to have more names to try and remind me of those mm. nicknames. I have nicknames, whether I remember them is a different thing altogether. <laughs> like, I, I can't remember them. I don't know why I create nicknames for myself. But the one 
horse name was really good as well because now I find myself naming horses from Star Stable names because I can be like, let's call this horse uh, Dash or something. I've got no idea if Dash is an option, but mm. its nickname <laughs> is also its Star Stable name. So it's easy to remember. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, definitely helps. Yeah. <laughs> and what's your least favorite and favorite updates of May, uh, TC? I feel like these all raised some really good points. Actually, things I completely forgot about as well. Um, mm -hmm. The reason I'm going to pick the Horses of Jorvik race is my least favorite. There's two reasons. One, it was probably just for me, maybe the slightly the weakest update out of May, but May was quite a strong month, I felt, overall. Um, the only reason I'm going to really pick it is because I had uh, bar my Arabian, okay, admittedly. I have not trained my Arabian. Um, I already have Max, my Moari, and my Teak, so it was kind of slightly uh, pointless to me to a degree. Um, I maybe would have preferred a breed, maybe two other breeds that were maybe a little bit uh, released a bit closer to that, uh, kind of like the Arabians. So admittedly, I did not really do it more than twice. Um, <laughs> but for that reason, I'm going to pick it. I didn't actually get to do Farah's uh, workshop stuff at all. The cold tolerance being removed from the game. I'm, I guess, I, other than like obviously the price difference with the horses, I'm not going to miss it. I know it adds realism, but I, I hated going through dino and collecting bones and the archaeology and it taking forever, so I'm not going to miss it in that regard. I was going to pick the main story quest as my favourite, but the reason I'm not is kind of the same reason you guys mentioned. I also feel like I've forgotten a lot of what's happened. And while I did enjoy the quests a lot, the horse naming and the magic horse hotkey is so much better, I think, um, in terms of like <laughs> mm. long-term play of the game, because uh, I love being able to switch the magical coats whenever I want. I mean, ever since they fixed the circus bug, where whenever you did the one of the circus races and it changed the horse into its magical form, which is, I used to do that race all yeah. the time so I could run around in my magical coat for as long as I wanted. Mm. Um, I know. But it was just, you know, you did the race and you were stuck in that colour, so I was fine with that. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to pick them over the Arabians, and the only reason I'm not picking the Arabians is because I didn't get the Rabicano, and I wanted the Rabicano. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so. Still waiting for that one. Yes, I am. So, yeah, uh, the horse names on the magic uh, horse code key for me. Yes, and then we can go along to June. Um, what was your least favorite and favorite updates of you, Quick? Now, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. oh no. Uh oh. We'll go with oh, my dear. favorite first because it's very easy to just get out of the way. <laughs> okay. And then we'll go on to. I I'm gonna least favorite no, but um. Yeah. So my favorite of June, uh, I think, was probably the Silver Glade update. There was a lot of good stuff that came to June. Um, in terms of activities, but obviously things like the Rainbow Festival, the Cloud Kingdom, uh, Midsummer stuff is stuff that we have seen before. However, I will say a big thank you for the wonderful pride bows that yeah. we got during the Rainbow yeah. Festival. Because it is amazing that they added literally every single one. I think, um, I, th I think it was Abigail Pinehaven that posted something on her Instagram discussing the fact that a lot of companies do tend to just you know avoid the whole pride month situations just so then yeah. they don't lose income mm -hmm. from people who maybe aren't okay with it um so i'm very very happy that star stable pulled through and was like we don't care yeah. if you know you don't want pride like pride is a part of their company so they're going to celebrate uh -huh. it as a team and it's really really nice that they've added it so we can celebrate mm -hmm. it and, you know, be proud of the fact that we are part of the pride. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was really, really fun. Um, but oh. I digress. My favorite update probably from June was Silverglade uh, and its makeover because it has been needing it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's one of the earliest places that you visit when you first buy. Like, it's you get to Moreland. Moreland's been updated, which is great. Fort Pinder has been updated, but then other places where where you first start off in the game um, haven't been updated for new players who are joining. So, you know, they go from Moorland and it's like this pretty nice area. They go to Fort Pinter oh. and it's like this nice, again, pretty updated area. And then they buy Star Rider and then they turn up to Steve's and to Silverglade <laughs> and they're like, oh my goodness, what happened to yeah. all of the pretty scenery? Oops. 
So I feel like now, yeah, it's a nicer flow, especially for when new players come in, they're not getting this like, oh my goodness, the non-Star Rider areas are so pretty, and then I pay for Star Rider and the world gets awful. <laughs> um, awful maybe is a strong word, but yeah. yeah. So I really, I like that they uh, made, made over Silverglade. It definitely makes it a nicer experience for newer players who, you know, don't get that huge graphical shock once they cross the threshold and see the old silver glade and also there were so many like little tiny details there's a nice flow to it i haven't uh ran the silver glade championships yet so i don't know if that's changed oh. a lot i'm assuming it has i don't think a lot yeah, but i cool. think like a few shortcuts are different or something yeah Interesting. i'd assume that maybe a few shortcuts from the before have maybe been blocked by the amount of houses and such and how far it stretches out now yeah, yeah i would say so as well um so that'll be interesting as well so not only is it a new makeover but it's kind of like it kind of throws all of the races off a little bit mm -hmm. so they've got a little bit more that they can work on now um so i'd assume that for any races that we've got out there you know the new update was kind of like hmm okay well now i have to learn new stuff to complete this race a lot quicker oh. Uh, so it might have added something on that range. Uh, but like I said, there's a lot of new little tiny trinkets and little hidden secrets all over the, the village. Um, but I think now what I would love for them to add to that silver clay area is to update the, the club hall. Because it still looks a little bit dreary in comparison to obviously the village. I would have loved if they would have updated that at the same time. It would have just made a little bit more sense. And Steve's. Because um, I, I felt there was a disconnect yeah, there. And yeah, yeah, I think Steve's definitely. Yeah, for sure. sure, yeah. I think I would have preferred if they had held off a little bit longer to update everything mm -hmm. in that area, yeah. inside and out, so that it's all coherent. Um, but overall, I do like the look of the new Silverglade. It's very, very colourful. It's very, very cosy. It's very, very welcoming. Um... And then on to my least favorite. <laughs> I'm scared. Now, uh, we discussed this a little bit uh, before our previous, I guess, yeah, it would technically be our previous mini podcast for SSOCon. Um, the club update. Uh -huh. I, I am somebody who, like I said, I uh, run a club on the UK servers called Glade Gamers. Um, wonderful people. Love them very much. Hello. <laughs> Um, however, recently we have had to uh, branch out a little bit. We've used the, the end of June, start of July to really make over the club. And that is purely because clubs in the game are running out of things to do and are in desperate need of some help from the Star Stable side. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Crumpet described this perfectly when uh, we were talking about it when the update first came out uh, in our own server um about the fact that you know star stable clubs are basically just using the star stable map but then are making up their own events because there's nothing in the game that helps us mm -hmm. uh it's a multiplayer game but the only stuff you can do together is race yeah or just run around the map doing random stuff and there aren't that any like activities implemented into the game to do together except for racing mm -hmm. and not everybody wants to race <laughs> untrained horses <laughs> over here i don't want to spend all of the time with my friends just running the same races over and over again especially you know coming from somebody who's playing the game for like seven eight years it, i've done it before i've done it for the past however many years we needed a club update yes uh the new window it's very nice to look at it's very I guess you could say useful in my eyes as somebody who, you know, doesn't have an issue with having to log on and invite people as just myself and instead of having to get somebody else in my club to do it, uh, I don't find the whole giving other people permissions that useful, I guess. In a way, I can add my, my co-owner, Pear, she now has the same uh, abilities as me to add people if needed, mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, I don't really find that aspect very useful. Uh, I think I saw uh, Ange, one of the other ambassadors, describe that the club window has a whole lot of empty room on one side of the screen. Mm -hmm. The whole window fills up your screen. I don't like that because I can't see anything and I can't move. Like if I'm running and or if I'm running around on the map uh, and somebody logs in, but I don't quite get to see whose name it is yeah. on the top yeah. right of my screen. 
I tend to open my my club uh, list a lot and just quickly see who yeah. it is, and then I can, you know, say a quick hello in the club chat. Um, but if I want to do that and I'm like mid running, I'm gonna end up just dead stopping in tra in my tracks just to check who it is. And I don't, I I like multitasking, and I can't multitask if the screen stops me. And also, like I said, there's a huge just empty area where the screen, because obviously they've made it full screen. Yeah. But there's just a giant bland patch of transparent <laughs> blue that I can see the whole world around me. I can't move yeah. and I can't do anything. Um, so yes, the, the, the visual stuff did need a bit of an update, but it the high demand for clubs right now is things to actually do with your club that doesn't cause people to go to an external place. Yeah. Um, I think you said, TC, when we were discussing this, that in terms of being able to mail the whole club yeah. and actually be able to use in-game stuff to keep maybe the younger side of the, you know, the community away from the likes mm -hmm. of Discord yeah. and Instagram is very handy and is very, you know, useful to keep the younger people safe. Yeah. Um, but I think for the most part, for current clubs, I don't think a lot of people are going to change from, oh, we have Discord already, but, you know, scrap the Discord, we'll use the mail now. Like, it hasn't stopped the current clubs. Totally agree, because I, I think people that are already on Discord and the likes of in external sites are going to stay there. They're not going to, it's not enough yeah. to drag them back in and to use the in-game chat or anything like that. That I know that 100%, but I think going forward, it's much safer for those that one aren't allowed and for ones that maybe you know are joining the game in future that maybe they won't go yeah. to external um means of communication which i think is much safer and, and mm -hmm. i think this should have been in the game a long time ago so yeah yeah it it we've had the mailing system for a long time so i i'm a little just i it shouldn't have taken however many years just to bring something as simple as emailing emailing <laughs> mailing everyone in your club um like you said it like you know discord's been around for a long time instagram skype mm -hmm. skype was even worse because you'd mm. literally see everyone's personal details at least with discord it's you know kind of built specifically for gamers to keep them safe um whereas skype very much was not like that and it be scares me that so many people used to use skype and just didn't care about you know their emails and their name and mm -hmm being displayed so yeah this was an update in terms of keeping people safe that should have happened a long long time ago yeah but in terms of you know activities that clubs can do together this isn't what we needed many clubs are disbanding or are struggling to you know keep people entertained mm -hmm. in terms of doing things together you know multiplayer is a very big selling point for the game and the biggest multiplayer that you can kind of do in the game right now is wave at each other as you pass each other on the street <laughs> so we we need things that we can do together that isn't just racing and we need stuff that is replayable because that's another thing you know racing is only entertaining for so long it's not got a huge replayability for a lot of people in the game but mm -hmm. yeah so for my least favorite i guess <laughs> update for june it's going to be the club update yeah. because yes we need club updates but it's not what we needed right now mm. the the ui wasn't high demand it's the actual use of the clubs and the improvements to you know help us out a little bit please <laughs> is what we really need um and this just wasn't it for me you know we gave so many ideas and i just kind of feel like that they weren't there mm. <laughs> at all but anyway that's yeah. my my rant <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say now. <laughs> um, I've like stopped everyone in their tracks now. Everyone's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite and least favorite update of you, uh, Cass? Wow, okay, after that, um... <laughs> 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 let's, Sorry! Let's see. <laughs> it's okay, no, that was very good. Um... I did agree. The the club update, I'm no longer in a club. It wasn't something that I need right now. And um, the mail system, it's good, was needed a long time ago. Uh, it's not like the mail system was updated, I guess. It's just this thing. It, to me, it feels like it was behind a locked door and they had it the whole time, I guess, but it wasn't there. But yeah, I just... To me, the user interface is a, a, annoying. When I used to log on to the game, I'd 
start training or running or something and I'd open up the club thing and see who was online when I was in a club and I know that you can't do that anymore but also mm -hmm. the new user interface very much fits with I feel um, Star Stable Mobile has that type of user interface. It just feels very different for me because it's it's different to the current Star Stable user interface and I'm waiting for them to change the entire user interface and for me to look at it and just be like, wow, this is a big change I have to get used to. But yeah, mm -hmm. I do think um, there's, there is a lot of empty space, especially since I've just made an empty club right now to check out the update, so there's just even more empty space where members would be shown. But uh, I don't know how they would fix that, so... Like, I don't know how they would change the user interface for that. Um, and also, the whole, you could open your mailbox anywhere. I think it's alright, but for me, I didn't check my mailbox often enough for me to make that much of an impact. So that whole club update just didn't really impact me a lot. But I'm also thinking about the midsummer celebrations. Once again, it was basically identical to last year. To me, I just found it interesting. They, they told us uh, back at Easter, I think, or Valentine's Day, that they weren't adding those in because they were focusing on other updates and they were still going to have Midsummer. So for me, I felt like, cool, they're working harder on Midsummer. Maybe, maybe I just got the wrong impression. But then the quests were the same and we were actually lacking two features we could yeah. we couldn't talk to npcs anymore and my favorite feature was the crafting of the wreaths and we couldn't do that either and uh the thing that i just yeah. found super interesting was in the last dialogue of the midsummer quest they spoke about the fact that you could go and talk to familiar faces around the area so that really made me feel oh. like they didn't take that into account and they didn't remove that dialogue so it felt very oh. copy and paste and i enjoyed doing it for the update and i do like mid summer it is winter in australia so it feels a little bit weird but oh. <laughs> i like being like yeah, yeah it's summer i can feel the summery vibes and i'm here like it's kind of cold though but um <laughs> it also just feels like something for me i need to have a club or friends to hang out with in star stable to go and play music otherwise i'm just drumming on the drum kit by myself and i'm not talking to anyone so it just it didn't really satisfy me this year whereas last year with the crafting of the wreaths i felt excited every day because i got to go and do something every day and it gave me a purpose to be there by myself but yeah so i'm kind of torn between those two now that i've said that overall i think i'm gonna say the club up because I'm not a club owner, I don't plan to be a club owner, and yeah, the club features. Even if they added anything else, I would be so happy for everyone else if they added new activities for clubs, but for me right now with my schedule and things like that, I just, club updates aren't going to be geared towards me, which is totally fine because Star Stable has to add them for the people who are in clubs, and I acknowledge that, and I'm just going to sit back and be happy for people, but yeah, my favourite, contrary to what some people might think, is I was super excited for Ayla and Umbra to come back because I couldn't get them last year. Because I, I don't think I was online or I was waiting, f I bought a new microphone so I could film better quality uh, audio in my videos and I kind of have this thing where I don't buy stuff without filming it. It kind of helps me like not buy horses I guess without there being a purpose so I was waiting for that so I just didn't buy them and although I love Ayla and Umbra um, I wasn't a massive fan of the horses auto slowing. I totally get where it comes from but I am still spam clicking the up button and also scrolling my <laughs> yeah. mouse like it's gonna do anything <laughs> And whenever I'm filming like horse skates, um, things like that, I keep accidentally trotting because I think I have to keep my horse from being slowed down. So I keep like mm -hmm. clicking the up arrow when I want to continue walking. But it's not that big of a deal. The E button, once again, I don't use it. I also don't type in the chat. I know some people have had trouble with that. I just, I didn't notice that. I tried to recreate it in the video to show that off and I couldn't get it to do it for me. So I think it was a very specific, you had to be standing next to something and it glitched out. Yeah. Like, you were typing the E button and it opened something. Um, it happened to me in my home stable. I was stood near one of my horses and I was trying to yeah. type to one of my club members and then the next thing it opened up the interface of my horse and I was going uh, berserk because I was like, why is this happening? <laughs> oh, At the no. time, it oh, hadn't yeah. clicked in my head and I just thought, something's wrong here. So, yeah. yeah. No, it's annoying. Yeah. 
Yeah, but my favourite was definitely the Silver Glade one. I hadn't even thought about the effect it would have on newer players coming from more land areas, so that I think is really good. For me, it was obviously hard to let go because I'm like, this is the Silver Glade that I know, but now I ride through Silver Glade and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this place. It's so open. I love the buildings. Anywhere I take a picture, I swear it's always aesthetic. The only downside it had was definitely as soon as I saw Steve's farm, I was like, Steve's farm looks so weird, <laughs> especially since it's basically connected to the village now, and yet it's not yeah. updated. I was like, oh my gosh, it looks so... I'm just don't angle my camera that in that direction. I can't look at Steve's <laughs> farm. But yeah, that's probably my favorite was Silverglade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully Steve's will be updated soon as well. Yes. Agreed. And for my least favorite and favorite of you. I do agree with the club updates that uh, it was a good step, but maybe a step that should have been done earlier. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to be done there. Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, I feel like just with the way they worded it on their update, a lot of people expected a lot more. Yeah, especially when they ask for ideas and uh, mm -hmm. maybe like write more about like this is the first step. And oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm hoping more in the future. But for my pick, I did pick the Midsummer Festival because it just felt very lackluster. And just as Cass mentioned, like the, the quest where they mentioned, like, go talk to people and then there's no one there. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, that definitely <laughs> confused weird. me. I was like, wait a second. Because I, I hadn't read the yeah. news about that and I was like, where's the people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and it makes me think of, because some years earlier it was like, Happy Midsummer 2017 when it was 18 and stuff like yeah. that. I was like, oh, oh yeah. okay. Yeah. It's a bit, uh, oops. And just in general, the Midsummer, um, it, it's just like this, um, this event that happens year after year and it has been uh, an event that they haven't changed much. Before they moved to Moreland and it was out in Seabull Glade and it was the same every year, nothing new. And now it feels like it's gone back to that. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just feels frustrating, like Midsummer could be more. Yeah. Especially now when they have said they want to add more Eurovegian things. So, and also extra because there was no Galentine event, there was no Easter. So it just felt then like, oh yeah, Midsummer, all right, we haven't had a holiday in a while. And then it was kind of like empty. Less. Yeah, I don't think I don't yeah. think I actually visited it again. <laughs> yeah, I kind of just did the quest to yeah to do them and then take you know meet some photos and yeah. We had like one club event there. Otherwise, I I haven't been there <laughs> because it just they just make me sad. Um, because talking to the NPCs was so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, and they usually give um, hints as to what might be coming up in future, and a lot yeah. of people like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That was a big yeah, a part of the like, appeal. Yeah. I do think that some of it might be because some of the Soul Riders, they were there, even mm -hmm. though if you were like a lower level player and you haven't met them yet in yeah. the yeah. story, you haven't like met them and they were still there. So and that was removing them might have just big spoiler easy fix kind of thing, just no NPCs, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, just so I don't. I'm not sure if that was the reason or if it was some technical bugs or... Yeah. 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 But yeah, it just was so sad. I was, yeah, a bit empty. And then for my favorite, uh, I had... It was like, it was hard to choose between the Rainbow Pride Festival, Club Kingdom and Sivgla Village makeover because I really love the Club Kingdom. Yeah, just so so cute and I love rainbows. I just realized I didn't everything. even mention it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like so much happened in June that I just Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as mentioned earlier, I also like absolutely adore the rainbow um, and the pride uh, set of bows. Mm. It was mm -hmm. so beautiful. And the fact that Starship really like you know, took a stand like we we're celebrating pride like we we love everyone um and just really like confirmed it like they weren't like wishy-washy about it mm -hmm. no they're like these these are us we, we love you if you're safe here 
that, that was really really important for me yeah um, because as mentioned like so many companies out there doesn't do that so it, it's really sad yeah um, so it's really happy and proud of that though it was a bit sad that the cloud kingdom you know didn't have much to do yeah like new things to do there so the rainbow sets and they're both absolutely fantastic i, I love them to bits um but for that reason i had to go and pick the silver blade village makeover as my favorite tune because boy what a long wait that has been yeah. <laughs> i think yeah. in this podcast we have been nagging about it it's over the village years. yeah for years yeah silver village because yeah it just really was weird, like, oh, beautiful Moorland and Fort Pinta, like, wow, this is such a cool game, I want to play it. And you go oh, you go over the hill and then it's like, wow. What happened? Is, <laughs> yeah. is this a village? Yeah, like, what? I paid money and this is what I get? Now I yeah. look back. Yeah, and, and the old village is so small. I'm like, it looks so tiny on yeah. such a large yeah. field. Yeah. 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 And it didn't feel like a village yeah. at all. Like, people live there? Poor souls. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's these teeny tiny houses, and like, where are the people? I only see shop owners. Like, yeah. So yeah, I think they did a fantastic job with uh, all the houses and just the feel and vibe of it. Uh, the aesthetic, the architecture, it really has like this Scandinavian feel to it. And I really yeah. love it. It just feels like taken from a Astrid Lindgren story and it just feels like especially now when it's like summer and it's like ah oh, just all the bright colors and so much fun and i really love that the different houses feels like there's a different person or family living there kind of have like yeah. their own mm. personality it's not like copy paste like brown red brown red brown red village you know yeah. <laughs> that some games tend to do like Hillcrest, I'm happy that they didn't go in like a Hillcrest kind of direction where it's just yeah. the same house but different colours line to line. They yeah, gave everything yeah. its own little use. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So, you Hillcrest next? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, Silgrid Village, it's, it's super cozy and full of life and detail now. Um, yeah, I love it. Like, there's so many different things. It feels like you can still explore new things now. Like, I love the little swing and the, yeah. the sandbox like some cute little kid lived there and oh it's cute or um, the cool detail that the council house has a ramp up which is really cool yeah and a lot of benches you can just sit on and just you're like oh so pretty and just nice and relaxing yeah so yeah it's, it's really like a big improvement actually really feels like a village now and uh, I would love to live there yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes so pretty uh, and how about you, TC? What has been your favorite and least favorite of you? This is tough because um, I have mixed feelings about quite a few of them. Um, I think when it comes to the club update, for example, I am really glad the direction it started in, but there is an awful lot to do. Yeah. Um, and it is a lot of stuff that I think should have been there a long time ago. And for a long time, for many, many years, I have gone on and on and on about the fact that there wasn't better in-game communication the fact that to message 50 people individually was just not practical and it made outside ways of communicating far more appealing which therefore then becomes a safety issue and that's been a big sort of pet peeve with me for a long time um so i'm glad that now that is there but we as as we said earlier it's it's not gonna bring ones that are already on discord and likes back in i really really don't see that happening but hopefully for future ones it maybe is going to provide enough going forward because i also think about the fact that a lot of clubs did move to discord i have seen a lot of clubs only will allow people in if they have discord etc etc yeah and that in itself is a problem because one it's a safety thing and also the fact that it is ex very exclusionary it's making it very exclusive which is not fair either so i think the fact that now it's going to be easier to communicate in game hopefully um we'll see more clubs now being able to function in game a lot easier but there's still a lot of features and things we need there and because it's moving in the right direction and i want to see that forward momentum continue i'm gonna say that it's not my favorite update but it is an update i've wanted for a really really long time one yeah. update that i actually 
didn't know I wanted, but yeah. I did. But is the um, the auto slowing function being removed? And that's actually my favorite because I hated when I was recording and I maybe wanted to turn my camera to the front and have my horse run towards the camera at a nice pace for filming or something like that. Or from the side, if I forgot to tap, that was slowed. And it also made it very difficult doing um, sometimes music videos and things like that. Because if you were like focusing so much on what you were doing, forget to tap, then your horse would stop and it would ruin the whole move. So yes. for me, mm-hmm. I, I like that that is there. And I think it hopefully will make it easier for dressage clubs as well. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's the reason I'm going to pick that as my favourite. But I really love the addition of the bows that we got on the Rainbow Festival. And I do think Silverglade's worth a mention. And the only reason that Silverglade probably isn't at my top is because Steve's didn't come with it and the castle. Because that was a thing for me. Because I went over and I was like, the village is gorgeous. I don't have anything to criticise in the village. It's just Steve's and, and the castle wasn't done. And I'm hoping that will follow. What is not going to be surprising is I'm going to pick Midsummer as my least favourite. And... The only word that I had on the morning that that happened and I logged in, I was bored. I'm sorry to say, yeah. but that is the truth. Um, I logged in and yeah. originally at the time I logged in, I couldn't actually do the quests. You had to re-log to do the quests. Yeah. So I logged in and I was immediately like, I have nothing to do. Yeah. So I just thought, right, whatever. So I, I discussed the, the club update because that was what I was excited about anyway. So um, I think I missed the fact that the NPCs aren't there to give information of what maybe is up and coming. I want to see them do more with Midsummer because I think there's plenty of things that could be done. And one of the things like one you mentioned earlier was the Galentine's thing. I used to yeah. love Valentine's Day on the game because you went up and you had that outfit to collect and you had to race with other people. And yes, as, as somebody who's socially like awkward sometimes, that yeah. was like sometimes hard to go up to somebody yeah. and be like... Do you mind if you do this race with me? But you know what? It was actually yeah. always really fun and I always yeah. looked forward yes. to it on it because um, I could go to the club and say, look, let's all go on and get our outfit and I. And it was something to do everyone as, was as a group. Everyone was in the same boat as well. Like everyone was looking for someone yeah. to do the race with. Yeah. yeah. So um, I enjoyed that. So I think if they could take that and bring it maybe into Midsummer, mm, and that you yeah. collect things to get an outfit, you know, that, w- that would be nice because I didn't like either of the Midsummer sets either. They were just not my thing and I know it's hard to please me to be honest with, with that, <laughs> sometimes it starts to fall. I, I have a particular thing that I like but uh, yeah that that's why Midsummer just completely kind of fell for me is when I logged in and thought oh there's no way I'm doing it. I did come back in later and then I did do the quests but I completely did them on autopilot and I just did them to get them done Yeah, I think for me I didn't realise that we didn't have wreaths and things like that because I logged in so early, like, as mm-hmm. soon as it came out that the news page wasn't out for a long time yeah. after that. Oh. I'd finished filming and editing before I even found out. So I went into the quest still excited because I was like, wreaths mm-hmm. to do after this, some other stuff to do after this. And then after that, I found out, hang on a second, no, that's it. And that's when I was like, oh, okay, I'm not as excited yeah. anymore. But yeah. And also, wait, one other thing. I agree that the no longer having to like spam the w button or like my horse can now walk is a useful feature Mm -hmm. i don't know if i said that it's and i do like it and i think it was well needed and i enjoy it it's just the fact that i'm so used to it not being there right now that it's something i have to get used to but yeah no i do enjoy that feature yeah i totally agree it's take a long while to get used to it (laughs) It's been so many yeah. years now. Yes. It's kind of like with the E-key introduction. Yes. Whenever I logged mm-hmm. in and I was like with that, I was like, oh no, I do not like this. I don't like this at all. And I immediately mm-hmm. was like, oh, if I can't turn this off, because I don't like things off. I don't know why, from, from a filming perspective, I love not having any UI. Yes. I yeah, just true. If I'm in a situation with a game where I can turn off some of the UI, oh, you'd be darn well sure I'll be doing it at some point yeah. um, mm-hmm. for certain things because I don't like having the UI on screen if it's not required for what I'm doing. Yes. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I was not me happy. Too. Yeah. And I was about to go off. And then I saw in the settings, I was like, oh, I can turn this off. I went off a little bit. And then I found it in the settings and I was like, sorry for all of that past few minutes. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I found it out after I recorded and edited my video. And then I was like, I'll just put it in as a comment underneath. It. Yeah. And I know that you can go in and you can turn it off. But I went off at first and then I was like, I'm not happy right now. But I kind of like just thought, right, we'll see. Maybe, maybe I can turn it off somewhere. And then when I found it, I could. I was like, okay, I'm good now. So yeah. I switched it off and I'd not be putting it back on, but then I have no. had the problem where I've been in my home stable and I've been trying to talk to my club and as soon as I hit E, it clicks something else that's near me and I don't like that yeah. because um, kind of what you're saying about the W key and you're so used to doing something, I'm used 
used to clicking mm. things, not yes. spamming E, so I'm not gonna switch over to spamming No, e. I'm not spamming E either, no. I've only found I've only kind of done it to collect recyclables and also the flowers. Yeah. There was Run Recyclable and Steve's Farm right next to the mailbox, and I couldn't click on it without oh. clicking on the mailbox, but then I used the E button and it picked up the recycling. Mm -hmm. So I was like, thank you, E oh. button, for not opening the mail <laughs> this time. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, my sort of overall thoughts. Like, there's a lot of really good stuff there. Yeah. You know, the, the Rainbow Festival and Silverglade and the club update, and Ali and Umber coming back didn't really bother me because I already had them. Yes. Uh, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, club update, I am looking forward to more. We need more. Yeah, I think clubs are a massive part of Star Stable. I think um, yeah. the community, you know, Star Stable is a multiplayer game and the fact that clubs feels so not interactive and multiplayer, it yeah, mm -hmm. it definitely needs more like community things to do with people because yeah. it's a multiplayer game. It's It shouldn't mm -hmm. always be up to us uh, trying to create something new to do in the game which I think is also mm -hmm. it's good for us to be creative in that way but we also need some help <laughs> yeah we're running out of ideas <laughs> we, I, I <laughs> yeah. genuinely do feel at the minute though that people are starting to run out of ideas because yeah. it feels like whenever you look at the community the community has done some amazing stuff I'm not going to take away yes. from the community they, yes. they have gone above and beyond like the way dressage has gone yeah. the way that realistic yeah. Play took off on Instagram. Yes. That all took off in the way that it did because people had so little to do. And people's editing and the drawing and the like the just general overall skill level of the community now compared to 2018 is just they're not even comparable. Yeah. Because there's <laughs> yeah. such a very big difference between them. Like I would never think of like going back to drawing nowadays because I'm like, my edits are horrendous. I know that with practice like, and all that, but like you know, you would get better. But but in my mind, it's just everything has taken such a big step up. I'm not telling people not to try. Please do try because we need mm. more creative stuff yeah. coming through. We need new people doing really awesome things. And I want to see that. But uh, yeah, we need more tools to make life easier because as a club leader, I am bored. That is just the truth. Yeah. I am bored. Like most of the stuff that I do with my club now is outside of the game. It's playing other games. It's like watching movies because we just have so little to do in the game. And as somebody that used to love training, loved racing, I've just lost all that. Really creating content is I guess the only reason I'm still as active as I am is the best way to put it. Mm. Yeah, for me, um, when I'm live streaming, I feel like if there was some more group events in the game, it would be a lot easier. Because when I'm thinking of, uh, you know, games I can play in Star Stable, I'm like, look, all I've got which works with live streaming is hide and seek. Otherwise, I've mm -hmm. got stream delay and a few other things. Whereas if we had a few other larger group activities as well, because clubs are like, what, 50 members or something, instead of yeah. groups of five members, um, I think it would just be not only useful for clubs, but also like i'm not in a club so i'm like oh i could maybe use those features for live streaming i guess but yeah yeah no i think we need more interactive things to do whether we would have you know the way they have guild battles and certain things in other games yeah, that would be so much fun you know like battles where you know your club yeah. goes against another club and they have to get points and stuff i would keep it that they would obviously have a certain amount that it's not going to turn into full like war because we know some people would get that competitive but yeah. <laughs> just something to kind of bring a bit of competitiveness yeah. back to it because i think yeah. for for me i liked racing because it was challenging it was fun and it was difficult and it was learning new shortcuts, figuring out new shortcuts, that was a big thing that made me pay attention to what I was doing. And I need something like that to engage my brain because if I don't have something that's extremely brain engaging, I switch off. I need a challenge. Yeah, and the clubhouse, it has like a big, beautiful glass um, trophy cabinet. That, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, you know, if you could race other other clubs and get, gain trophies, maybe you could level up your club and then mm -hmm. for each level you get more stuff in the clubhouse or like an exclusive outfit or, you, you know, something. Yeah. So you can collectively like do, you know, challenges or, you know, something. That would be yeah. so much fun. I feel like I've seen a yeah. lot of clubs being like, oh, this is my sister club and things like that. So they're, they're trying to connect with other clubs as well. And there's not a proper way to do that in the game. Yeah. 
Yeah, because yeah. I, I ran two as one at one point um, to deal with the fact that I couldn't fit everybody, this is a few years ago, into one club. Now it's back to one because we just got, we kind of ran out of things to do and we just kind of got bored. We're going to have to revisit a club episode at some point, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel yes. bad talking about yeah. stuff now because I feel like Star Stable is working on stuff behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. So I, I really mm-hmm. don't want this to be taken as a I hate Star Stable. It's meant to be a, as mm-hmm. a Star Stable. Yeah. Uh, here's some things that we're looking for. If you're working on yeah. it, then we're yeah. excited to see it. And if you're not, then maybe take some of our ideas. But I'm, I don't want to downgrade yeah. any of the work that Star Stable is doing. <laughs> Yeah. I yeah. will say, like, in May and June, there's plenty of really good things in there. Some things mm. that, like, yes, will just become a part of a feature that I'm just, I will eventually get so used to that I'll not even think about. Yes. But I appreciate it's there. Mm. Yes. Do you know? I do. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. On to our next segments, our wishes. Uh, a wish of what we would like to have added into the game. And our guest Cass are, uh, can have two. So yeah, should we start with you, Cass? What wishes would you like to have added to the game? Okay, I feel like mine are kind of basic. Um, my first one is something I've spoken about a little bit. And I feel like it. I just want higher graphics. I think the graphics in Star Stable are really awesome. It just kind of annoys me a little bit. The fact that I can look and I can see a mountain which looks very close to me but I can't see the details. To me it just looks a little bit unrendered and I, I just don't like that and I totally understand if they can't add something which adds a higher render distance. I'm not sure how their game mechanics work, but if it's it's kind of like Minecraft where they're loading chunks, then I guess in Minecraft you can change your chunk slider to view more or less mm-hmm. depending on your computer. But yeah, yeah, I just I'd really like to just stand on top of a mountain or something and be able to see more than I currently can. It just the distance I think looks a little bit uh bad. <laughs> For lack of better words, it just mm-hmm. it's it's something that I feel like might be smaller to other people, but I like to be a uh, creative film in in Star Stable, so um, I've done very few, but I like to do some role plays and things like that, and that's very like look at the pretty graphics, and I look in the distance, and I'm like, mm. it's not very pretty over there don't look over there um (laughs) so that's probably my first one i don't know what other people would say about that or if that's even possible but like a dream update right it doesn't have to be possible i guess it's just yeah and my other thing once again is very very small but for me it's just kind of like a useful thing these are even like adding things into the game but i want a windowed full screen mode i Yes. Don't like the window oh, mode uh, because there's the bar thing <laughs> ratio is just weird. But then the full screen mode. Yeah. If I want to click something on my other monitor, my entire star stable minimizes itself, and it's small, mm-hmm. but it matters yeah. to me. But yeah. Oh. No, I get that completely. I completely agree. Yeah, I I got a program to lock um star stable open oh. and it stays open. Uh. Oh. I will link you it after. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because, uh, literally, back in the day, whenever you would be streaming, if I had to click on the other monitor, it would minimize Star Stable. Around, well, it, when it minimized it, it would freeze yes, the frame on the, yes, on the, yeah. on the stream. Yeah. And that was the biggest pet peeve. People in the chat are always like, your yeah. game's frozen, your game's frozen. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. no, no, I just have to type something. I'm coming back. It's, it's not yeah. really frozen. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no. Yeah, so oh, I went and bought a program for that because I was like, enough of this, because this this triggers me. <laughs> <laughs> so. Awesome, not the only one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's really all I had. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, those, those are good uh, suggestions. Like definitely, if we could uh, adjust the render for ourselves, like if we were like, oh, I want my game to run a bit smoother, but I need to reduce the graphics a bit. Yeah. Do that, or oh. if a computer is good to handle it, we could drag it up and see see more if they could do that. Yeah. I actually looked into the graphics mm-hmm. settings recently for a video where I was trying to explain the graphics and also the fact that my mm-hmm. user interface is small because I have a re- high resolution screen, and I realized yeah. that the graphics graphic settings in Star Stable don't do a lot at all and I feel like it never used mm-hmm. to be like that. Huh. I feel like something's changed. Maybe I'm just remembering mm-hmm. it wrong but I feel like maybe that's a reason some people have a lot of lag is the graphic settings basically do nothing. Maybe that's just what I notice 
maybe they do and my computer just doesn't show it as much but I don't know. <laughs> I think when I recently dragged my graphics away down just to see because I was trying to take a picture where I could easily like green screen out the background. I literally did that like yesterday yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that as I dragged it down, the grass texture became less and less, but I could still see some grass. See, when I did that, oh. I used to think some trees in like the distance would like shrink and stuff, but I was trying it. Maybe it was just the location I was trying it as well. I didn't see any difference when I did that, and I was like, this is weird. Usually there's a difference, but yeah. I just feel like it's very minimal, whereas you have some games which you have low quality and then you have high quality, and there's this massive difference, yeah. but I also massive difference, yeah. feel like Star Staples a game that they want most people to be able to run on computers, so their high quality might not actually be high quality in a way. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. I suppose there is a trade-off to have it available to more people, regardless of what their graphics card yeah. is. Yes. I guess that is the trade-off with it. It's very interesting. <laughs> and for my wish, uh, I tried to tie it to, to the topic of Wild Heart, and uh, one thing I noticed in Wild Heart was that you could have your own place a little cottage yes. mm -hmm. that you could decorate and I'm like oh, I want to do that with my home stable so bad <laughs> yeah <laughs> like oh, it's just it's just been like it was hinted at so many years ago but then yeah, like, yeah nothing with happened. the sofa and oh the paint gosh. and the mm -hmm. barrel yeah. that we've got in our inventory yeah, and, like, and how they're just still sitting with. there <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it like only like you could expand like more boxes and yeah, maybe that's it. But like, I would like to have s some options, like, uh, or maybe if you change your mind and you don't want uh, a big stable, like maybe you want to have it small again, or maybe you wanna... Yeah, I don't know, it just feels like a stable, but it's not a home, like it's not personal. Yeah. I don't know, I just really wish for it to come soon. <laughs> yeah, that's my wish. Um, how about you, you quick? What's your wish? I mean, going off uh, what... I think TC and Cass actually discussed, you know, mm -hmm. turning your graphics down yeah. so that you can green screen yourself out of a photo. <laughs> Mine's something to do with photo mode. Obviously, we yeah. have the ability where we can make our horse vanish. Yeah. I'd yeah. like us to have the ability to then switch it round and be able to get a PNG or like a transparent background of our horse and character. Mm -hmm. So to be able to vanish the background instead. Oh, or even if it, we don't visually see it. Yeah, so even if we don't visually see them removing the background. Mm -hmm. But if there was a button where we could just save our character and our horse. Like if you're riding your horse at the time and you go into photo mode in a specific pose, you can click a save transparent PNG. Yeah. And it, mm. it saves just your horse mm -hmm. and character. Or if you're not on your horse and you take a photo of your character, it just saves your character. Yeah. Because obviously, like TC said earlier, we have a lot of people in the community that love to, you know, yeah. edit things. Mm -hmm. And I know that the whole idea of being able to make our character and horse invisible so that we can take very easy, you know, background photos uh, mm. without anyone in it has been very, very useful. But I think now it would be super, super handy for those who, you know, really edit and manipulate a screenshot that they take of their horse and their character and really change up the pose a lot to have to completely, you know, remove the whole lassoing their horse and mm -hmm. character out of yeah. the screenshot that they've taken yeah. beforehand. It'll save so much time. It'll mm -hmm. make it super, super easy for content creators to, you know, put like their character on like a thumbnail, for example. Yeah. Um, super super easily change up the background behind what your horse and character is doing you know manipulate things just an easy way like that to help creators because you know there's a lot of stuff that the community does make and like i said the background thing did help a lot of people you know being able to make their character and their horse invisible um for anyone with you know socon and stuff like that or other events a lot of the times hosts will ask you like hey can you send me a photo of your star stable character or can you send me a transparent version of your star mm -hmm. stable character um and it's a lot of like yeah it's it's a quick task but it's so tedious and it's so irritating yeah. so it'd be really really handy 
and very, very useful for the creative side of the community to have that ability to, you know, not only make their character and horse vanish for easy access of clear and, you know, nice backgrounds, yeah. but also to make the background vanish or to be able to save just a transparent PNG of their horse and rider cuts out so much time for editing and creating. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a simple update, but I think mm. it'd be highly, highly beneficial for those of us who... Yeah. you know need stuff for thumbnails yeah. and edits and stuff like that yeah yeah really cool idea that would be really fun to see uh, and how about you tc what is your wish um it's tough because i know that club updates is really like further club updates is what i really want but with what quick just mentioned because there's nothing i can really think of with wild heart mm. yet until i play it that i can really think of uh, mm. to be a suggested wish but if they got to the point that they could create a video mode in Star Stable mm, in the way that yeah. they have created photo yeah. mode where you could hide your character and hide your horse or whatever you want to hide um, that would open so many avenues for people to do creative stuff yeah. in Star Stable that would all give us yeah. something to do like um, videography yeah. is <laughs> really so, peak from that um, I think that would be a really really cool thing I technically speaking though I'm sure it would be an absolute nightmare so yeah. it's a wish <laughs> if, it, if it ever happened but but, uh, yeah, that would be mm. uh, something that comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, I think a video mode is something that a lot of players have been wishing for. Yeah, I know that mm, uh, yeah. some of the ambassadors did do a tag with it um, to suggest a video mode. I just know that, like, technically yeah. speaking, I'm sure it's a nightmare, but it yeah. would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I know in terms of how Crumpet does stuff, um, when she films, you know, stuff like, the GG dressage or she came uh, with us the other day when we did a liberty lesson uh, mm. to record some stuff for again SSOCon and the way a lot of people are doing it at the moment is they're riding quarter horses the new gen 3s because their heads are so low mm -hmm. that the horse's oh. heads depending on how far your um, point of view or what are you, yeah point, mm -hmm. point of view yeah. field of yeah. view uh, scale is set in so if you've got it zoomed all the way in it cuts out completely the horse uh, the quarter horse that obviously wow. you're riding yeah. on. so if you make your character invisible or if you you know go wild and take off mm -hmm. all your tack then change your field of view zoom in and you're riding a quarter horse you don't see it mm -hmm. because its head is so low yeah every so often wow. you'll get an ear or like a nose yeah. from when it's standing still and it animates upwards but you know for the most part that is how a lot of people are trying to do cinematic stuff at the moment yeah but it's so hard to control. Well, that's what I mean. People you know, are so creative. They're like, right, well, yeah, I need to do this. So yeah. I'm going to do it. I do you know? that. Wow. But um, going uphill it didn't really work too well with that. So no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Flat ground was very mm. good with it, but definitely not a perfect system. But creative, mm. yes. Yeah. No. Yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's definitely yeah. a start. <laughs> yeah. But it was... It's. It's hilarious to see from, you know, <laughs> the non-quarter horse person watching Crumpet <laughs> trying to turn around and all I hear is, what direction am I facing? Is <laughs> 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 he'll Aww. let, like, she'll turn her visual off and then she'll be, like, facing her character's or her horse's butt and yeah. she'll be like, oh, that explains a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so I definitely like the idea of having some kind of, like, we have a lot of stuff to help photography mm -hmm. and editing photos, so I I feel like a lot of people like videography now filmers mm. in the community will definitely benefit from something like yeah. that like you said tc so yeah yeah we are we are a demanding bunch i will admit like i fully <laughs> accept that we are a demanding <laughs> lot we want a lot of things yeah <laughs> yeah and that brings today's podcast to an end thank you so much Cass, for joining us today thank you for inviting <laughs> me <laughs> thank you and let us know in the comments what your thoughts are about wild heart and uh, if you think you would play, as always, um, su suggestions for future topics are very much welcomed in the comments as well. Uh, and with that, we will wish you a great summer. Yes. And bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> bye. -bye. bye.